We have to be able to decarbonize our economy whilst ensuring access to power, whilst ensuring affordability of the transition, all at the same time. The solution to that difficulty, I think, is to see the transition as a source of opportunity rather than as something to be defended against. There's no doubt in my mind about the financial success that these companies that are engaging in building and deploying these new technologies are going to achieve. The themes and sectors that we've identified that we believe are the most important from a climate technology perspective, they represent a wide spectrum. And that wide spectrum you can think of as being technologies that are largely mature and that are now scaling or have scaled in a very significant way. Renewables, solar and wind. Hydrogen, of course. The other end of the spectrum, you've got things like alternative proteins, particularly cultured meats, for example. You've got the well, next generation of nuclear fusion technologies. When we talk about circularity in materials, in apparel industry, in electronics. And then we also include the categories that are important where practices need to change. Agriculture, regenerative farming, the link between that and also the adoption of alternative proteins. We see significant value at stake from decarbonization and wider sustainability. First, we need to significantly ramp up capacity in order to make the energy transition happen. What gives me a bit of concern, though, is the clock is ticking and carbon is a budget, not a run rate question. And so the more that we delay, the more that we consider postponing long-term investments because of short-term turbulence, the harder and harder it gets. 